planning between protests and calls to pick up the pace. Major infrastructure projects of supra-regional significance are complex and expensive. Expectations for their execution and effectiveness are high. Such projects are transport routes like railways and motorways, their bridges and tunnels, and airports. Also, energy production sites, transmission lines, or super-regional projects for water management, waste management, communications, and other sectors. These long-range investments in the future are challenging to plan, engineer, and construct. Their environmental and social impact also harbors considerable potential for conflicts. Planning processes aim for sustainable, integrated spatial development. They always must consider conflicting interests, analyze costs and benefits, and assess numerous risks. They are expected to enable participation to account for environmental and nature protection and to integrate various sectors. And they have to be legally irreproachable in their process and outcome. At the same time, there is growing pressure for planning processes to be faster. The Emsha Conversion Project shows the development of a proactive and multifunctional regional development strategy during implementation. The research group around Gerard Hutta argues that it is vital to anticipate the temporality of large infrastructure projects. Our main key message is that um, if we're looking at the temporality, we should not only focus on acceleration. Acceleration, of course, is important. Ex acceleration means a change in tempo that the tempo is increases and more things are happening in time. But we think it's also important to look at, for example, the duration of these infrastructure projects. The Fehmarn Belt Link project will create a new border region between Germany and Denmark. Mega infrastructure projects typically follow top-down planning, but sustainable planning must also consider local needs and aspirations. The Belt Initiative explores the tension between top-down and bottom-up approaches, asking how bottom-up strategies can support integrative and sustainable regional planning. Their work navigates the complexities of participation, conflict, sustainability and integrated planning. From a regional development perspective, uh, the Fiemen Belt Connection represents a unique opportunity to uncover the potential of the entire region and to create development uh, strategies. Um, we, as the Belt Planning and Network Initiative, want to initiate a, coll a collaborative planning perspective with citizens and local stakeholders in focus, and especially in the future uh, generation. So one of the main objectives are to create a shared, locally anchored planning vision based on a bottom-up approach with a broad foundation in the region itself because this new belt region is full of local values and capacities and people who have a strong sense of place. The process of planning and constructing infrastructure is essential to fulfill societal needs, so longer delays are a real problem. The reason for these delays can be found in lengthy planning processes, the lifespan of infrastructure and uncertainty regarding societal needs. Responsiveness in the context of planning processes describes the ability of planners to adapt quickly to changing needs, so they can mitigate these delays and ultimately benefit society significantly. To evaluate this, Arnor Elvarsson and his team at ETH Zürich propose an ex-ante evaluation method. With his method, the balance between the societal value of planning outcomes and the time required to achieve them can be assessed. Policymakers who shape our planning processes decide the legal framework around our planning process, like what tasks are to be done and in what sequence we do them. With the global challenges that we face today, like meeting net zero objectives by 2050, um, we now have a, a, a challenge to solve. Policymakers all around Europe have identified the hindrance of building green energy infrastructure faster. So we as a society must also be talking about the added societal value that it brings about to improving our planning processes. Their analysis shows how one can quantify the value of added responsiveness and the correlation with greater societal benefits. 
However, their case study also shows that simply reducing planning time does not always result in improved societal outcomes. So, a nuanced approach to infrastructure development is essential 